In this video, you'll learn how to print on t-shirts using a lino block. I'll explain my approach to the whole process, including transferring your design to the block, carving the block, printing the shirt, and troubleshooting results to see what kinds of issues might come up. There are links to some of my favorite supplies below, and I am an artist affiliate with both Blick and Jackson's Art, so if you purchase something using the links, I'll get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thanks for joining, and let's get into it. I'm using a 12 by 12 unmounted linoleum block. This will depend on the size of your design and they can also be cut down to size. The sketch that you wanna print, tracing paper, carbon transfer paper, painter's tape, scissors, both a soft tip pen and a hard tip pen for tracing. I'm using a Sakura Micron pen as well as a basic Bic pen. You'll also need any kind of paint palette and water, a paintbrush and acrylic paint, a paper towel or cloth. Start with taping your sketch and the tracing paper to hold them steady. When everything is secure, begin tracing your design with the soft tip pen. This is a good time to modify any lines in your sketch that need to be clarified. After the whole sketch is traced, grab your block and the carbon paper. Tape the carbon paper to the block with the dark side down so it will transfer with the pressure from the hard tip pen. Flip your sketch backwards and tape it down on top of the carbon paper. We need to flip it backwards or else it will print backwards after we carve the block. I'm cutting my carbon paper because there is excess room at the top and not enough coverage on the side. You may or may not need to do this depending on your design. Make sure all the layers are secure and trace your design again with the hard tip pen. Now your design is transferred to the block. I like to cover the block with a very thin layer of acrylic paint. This prevents your carbon transfer from smudging or rubbing off as you touch and move the block while carving. It also gives a good visual of the negative space while carving and shows any areas that you have carved or missed. Use only a little paint and water it down a lot. After the block is covered with paint, you can lightly brush it with a paper towel or cloth to smooth it out and make sure there's no excess paint, then let it dry. Now that the block is prepped, we are ready to carve. Grab your lino block and tools. I love using the set of Japanese wood carving tools. There are several different tips to select based on what area you're carving, and it is very convenient to grab a different tool rather than unscrewing the tip to change it out like with some tools I've seen. These tools are sharp, so it's really important to keep your free hand behind the tool at all times and always carve away from yourself, because if and when it slips, you don't want your hand to be in the path of the tool. I've definitely slipped when carving many times, but never cut myself because of this guideline. For curves, I like to hold the carving tool mostly straight and rotate the block. For me, this reduces slipping and mistakes and creates a cleaner line than holding the block still and trying to curve the tool around. Don't be afraid to rotate and reposition the block to get the best angle for the section that you're working on.
To create a choppy texture instead of smooth lines, move the tool side to side as you push it forward. I like to use a self-healing mat under my workspace because it protects my table if the tool slips off the block. When you're done carving, use the scissors to trim off any excess from the edges of the block. It is easiest to vacuum the scrap pieces of lino or you can brush it off too. Now that our block is carved, let's get printing. You'll need newsprint, the carved block, brayer, a glass plate, palette knife, ink, spray bottle with water, and a rolling pin. And of course, the shirts you'll print on and hangers. I got these shirts from a thrift store. Even if you're using new shirts, make sure to wash them first since there could be a factory coating on the fabric that prevents it from picking up the ink. Lay down newsprint in the area that you're working with to keep everything clean. Then squeeze your ink onto the glass plate and mix it well. I like to start with a little ink to make sure the proportions are right for the color that I want. Then I add more ink in the same proportions or adjust from there. I love Cranfield's Caligo Safe Wash inks and highly recommend them. They're oil-based but also clean up very easily with soap and water. The texture consistency and pigments are high quality and they're easy to work with. I got a set that includes white, black, red, blue, yellow, and the extender. After my colors are mixed, I add a little extender that thins the ink just a bit and also helps it stay wet for longer. Keeping your ink at the top of the plate will also help it stay wet longer. Touch the brayer into the ink and pull it down the plate. Start with a little at first, slowly adding more. Roll it out onto the plate until it is even on the plate and the brayer. It will feel tacky and sound a little like Velcro. I think it's really satisfying. Use only a thin layer of ink for the first time you're applying it to the block. Roll it on in a smooth motion using lighter pressure. You will probably need to pick up more ink from the plate in order to cover the whole block. Make sure the whole thing is evenly covered, then we will do a test print on newsprint. The idea is to slowly build up the layers of ink on the block so these first few test prints will be spotty. Position the block, press down firmly with your hands, and then use the rolling pin to go over the whole block. I use heavy pressure with the rolling pin and go over the whole thing a few times to make sure there is even coverage. Taking a look at this first print, notice the left edge has barely printed. This is from the block slipping off the edge of the self-healing mat underneath, so pressure wasn't evenly applied to that area. Do a few more test prints, slowly adding more ink to the block until you are satisfied with the result. This is the consistency of ink on the block that has worked best for me. The sound and how it glints in the light are good indicators to look for. Printing on fabric requires more ink than printing on paper. You'll get the feel of it as you work on projects and with more practice. Now let's print on a shirt. Lay it flat on the table and make sure there aren't any wrinkles in the front or the back pieces of the fabric. Wrinkles will lead to inconsistent pressure and create lines across your print. Spend extra time on this step and make sure that it is flat and even in the areas that you want to print. Lightly mist the fabric with water using a spray bottle. I find that this helps the fabric pick up the ink. Place your inked block down and use the rolling pin to go over the whole thing. I 
find myself wishing I had a printing press, but the rolling pin and some elbow grease works well for a fraction of the cost. Carefully peel the block away from the fabric for a big reveal and admire your work. Slip a hanger through the bottom of the shirt, careful to not overlap any areas of fabric that you just printed because it will smudge. This is an example of a shirt that I'm really pleased with. There's even ink coverage, even pressure, not spotty except for that little corner down there. There is a little bit of loss of detail, but those areas could probably be carved a little bit deeper. Overall, I'm really happy with this one. And keep in mind that this is a handmade item with a handmade process, so there's going to be little imperfections, and I think that just adds to the character of it. This is the first test print that I did, and as you can see, it's really spotty, not enough ink, and also indicates areas that could use some attention with the pressure. Here's the second test print, and already it's looking a lot better. There's still that edge that I need to apply more pressure with. This is the first test on a shirt that I did, and overall it has pretty good ink coverage until we get down here to the other block, and there's not enough ink on a lot of the edges of these letters. This block I have used before and got a little bit warped when I washed it, so if the block is warped, then that means the brayer is not going to roll over it evenly, so some of those bumpier areas might need a little bit of extra attention with the brayer. On this part here, you can see a defined line through the flower. I think that is probably from the newsprint or the shirt underneath being wrinkled. I also did a run with this red pink color, and I feel like the coverage looks pretty good, but this is also before I started spraying the fabric with a little bit of water before printing, and I feel like you can see how the impression is a lot lighter without the water, even with a lot of pressure. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and inspiring to you and that you'll try this. I learned how to do this through research and practice, so use it as a jumping off point and see what works best for you. And let me know if you have any questions or tips to offer.